Hello everybody, um, in this video I'm going to solve the last problem that I discussed last time which is the adiabatic reactor. So um, this adiabatic reactor is um, a different type of, uh, of problems, it's the same thing, it's a reactive system, we are going to solve it using the methods that we discussed before, but the difference here is that it's adiabatic, which is, was not the case uh, for the previous uh, problems. We will see what is the different uh, difference in the solution now, but let's uh, see what we have here. We have uh, a reaction for dehydrogenation of ethanol to acetaldehyde. So this is ethanol and the reaction is ethanol vapor converts to acetaldehyde, um, vapor and hydrogen, and it is carried out in a continuous adiabatic reactor and we have 100 moles of ethanol vapor uh, is fed to the reactor at 400 degrees Celsius. The conversion is 30%, so we have uh, ethanol, um, acetaldehyde, and hydrogen in the product. Um, it's an adiabatic reactor, um, so it says continuous adiabatic reactor here. So uh, adiabatic means the Q is zero, and the required here is to calculate the product stream temperature. Uh, so I don't know the product uh, temperature here in the stream and we know that the CP of the acetaldehyde is given with this formula the, the reason it's given because it's not in the table, uh, table B2 so we don't know the constants so it's given in the problem statement so what we are going to do here is um, uh, we, we are going to follow the same procedure but with a different requirement each uh, of the problems that we solved before we had the um, uh, the the temperatures given for the feed and the product, and we were interested in calculating the amount of heat given uh, to the system or absorbed from the system or the reactor. In this case, we have no heat uh, supplied or heat removed from the uh, from the reactor, so we need to know what is the outlet temperature. So um, the the uh, what we will do is the same procedure that we do every time. We have to uh, do the mass balance or the mole balance calculation. So we know that the uh, conversion is 30%. So the number of moles of ethanol in the product is 70 moles, which is uh, the rest of the, the 100%. 30 is consumed, so 70% is left. And um, from the mole balance on ethanol, we can calculate the extent of reaction, which is going to be 30. And from this, we can calculate the number of moles of acetaldehyde and of hydrogen in the product stream. So now we know uh, the, the total uh, or the flow rate of the components in the product stream, and we know the extent of reaction. So we are going to uh, next write the energy balance equation. And the energy balance equation uh, is uh, the change of enthalpy plus change in kinetic and potential energy equals Q plus W. There is no work because it is, um, it is a reactor. We don't have any, uh, any work uh, mentioned in the problem statement. There is, we will ignore the change in kinetic and potential energy because we don't have any information about them. Um, and we know that they are negligible. And finally, we have no Q because it's an adiabatic reactor. And we, we mentioned this before that adiabatic means it is perfectly uh, insulated so that there is no heat uh, lost to the surrounding or gain from the surrounding, which means that Q equals zero. So the, re the equation will be uh, will reduce to delta H equals zero. Uh, this is very, very similar to uh, a problem that we solved at the end of chapter 8 where we were dealing with the uh, adiabatic heat exchanger where we had two streams going into a heat exchanger and we said that the, uh, the, the energy is transferred from the cold stream or the hot stream to the cold stream and we said that there is no losses to the surrounding so delta H was zero in that case as well so uh, we said in that case or in this problem that uh, it's fine to have delta H equal zero because delta H contains a lot of terms. So uh, this can be expanded to be equal to zero. So it's it's fine. So um, what we will do here is we will uh, see how to calculate delta H. Delta H uh, will be calculated using the heat of reaction method. So uh, this is what we have that we have ethanol vapor. Uh, producing uh, acetaldehyde and hydrogen and we will uh, we will go through the path that passes through the uh, the hypothetical path where we have ethanol is uh, dehydrogenated at the standard conditions and delta H here is going to be the extent of reaction multiplied by the standard heat of reaction. Uh, 
so we will calculate delta H1, delta H2, and delta H3, and the total delta H is going to be the summation of these three delta H. So uh, one thing that uh, I'm doing here in this solution, a little different from the textbook, is that I am considering here ethanol to be liquid at, um, at the standard conditions. And the reason I'm doing this is because the melting point or the boiling point of ethanol is around 80 something uh, and uh, the standard conditions and 80 something at one atmosphere. And uh, so ethanol at 25 Celsius and one atmosphere is definitely going to be liquid. So this is what I did. The textbook, uh, the solution in the textbook assumes that uh, this is vapor or it, it gives the equation as uh, ethanol as vapor at the standard conditions. Uh, so this makes this step for H1 uh, much easier or, or uh, quicker than what we are doing. So I'm going to um, go with the solution this way. And at the end, I'll show you uh, the difference between the results from uh, what I'm doing and what the textbook is doing. So um, uh, delta H is going to be delta H1 plus delta H2 and delta H3. And what we're going to do is calculating these three. Uh, I just want you to, to keep in mind that we are interested in calculating the temperature of the product. The temperature of the product will, will show up here. So I can calculate delta H1, I can calculate delta H2, but delta H3 would be function of temperature. So there will be temperature here and this whole, uh, uh, the summation of these three terms is going to be equal to zero. So this is what we are going to be uh, trying to do. So um, for uh, delta H1, we have ethanol, just pure ethanol in the feed. We have nothing else in the feed stream, just ethanol. So we will have ethanol at 400 degrees Celsius vapor. And we want to convert this into ethanol liquid at 25. Again, this is not what is done in the textbook. The textbook takes it in just one step from ethanol vapor at 400 to ethanol vapor at 25. Um, so this is going to be uh, 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 first uh, going to vapor, uh, saturated uh, vapor at 78.5 degrees Celsius, and then we'll gain latent heat to be liquid at 78.5, and then we'll gain, uh, we'll lose, I'm sorry, we'll lose uh, temperature or heat to for the temperature to decrease to 25 degrees Celsius. Um, so this is uh, how we are going to calculate delta H1. So we, we need to calculate this part, this part, and this part. Let me just open the textbook uh, just for uh, quickly to check something with you um, in, the, um, in the appendix. So this is table B2. Um, just a second. So this is table B2. We have here ethanol. Um, this is ethyl alcohol, and um, this is this is something that is uh, and making the solution in the textbook um, valid. That the constants for um, for the uh, uh, for the gas uh, is valid for the temperature range of zero to twelve thousand. So this is. Uh, 1200 so this is something that you you need to check that the the temperature range is valid for um, or the constants are valid for the temperature range in our case it is more than zero so it's 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 fine to do this um, but again I'll, uh, I'll i'll show you the difference when we do the solution so um, now delta h a is going to be the integration for the gas phase from 400 to 78.5 uh, which we can calculate to be negative 30.087 for the latent heat of vaporization negative latent heat of vaporization is delta h2 delta h3 is going to be the integral from 78.5 to 25 degrees celsius which is going to be negative 8.48 kilojoules per mole and from this we can calculate the h1 it's very systematic very uh, very similar to what we did many times before so there is nothing new here for delta h2 is going to be calculated from the standard heat of, of, of formation um, and this is one more difference here the heat of formation that i have here um, for uh, uh, this is the product acetaldehyde it's gas anyways um, because the acetaldehyde has um, yeah this is good to, to check uh, if you check the textbook the table uh, for acetaldehyde, we will have here the melt, the boiling point is 20. 
So at standard conditions, acetaldehyde is gas. So uh, we are we are, we have um, the constants for acetaldehyde for the heat of formation is only available for the gas phase, which is making our our life easier. For ethanol, we have um, ethyl alcohol. We have two constants, uh, two heats of formation, one for gas and one for liquid. Since I am I am assuming liquid at standard conditions, I'm going to pick this number, which is negative two hundred seventy-seven point six three. The textbook is assuming uh, gas, so it's the textbook is substituting with negative two hundred thirty-five point thirty-one. Um, so now this is the uh, the the value of delta H two and for delta H three we will have ethanol from twenty five Celsius that will go to ethanol at the product temperature which we don't know so uh, I'll assume it's it's gas at this at these conditions and it's going to go through the same three steps in reverse heating till be, till it becomes saturated liquid then heating till it becomes saturated vapor and then heating till it becomes vapor at the product temperature which I don't know. Um, for acetaldehyde it's already vapor it's going to be vapor and for hydrogen from vapor to vapor and we will substitute with the uh, uh, with the integrals uh, for uh, delta h d e f g and h f g and h are going to be function of the product temperature which is not known so this is the first time where we will see the product temperature as a variable here and here and here uh, for G and um, this is um, sorry this is H it's not G this is uh, H uh, so it's some state but anyways the the yeah, what we used to do before is about picking numbers from table B8 is not valid here because I don't know this temperature so I have to use the constants and I have to include these three equations with uh, temperature uh, power one two three four three times one here one here and one here so we will have temperature uh, three times four twelve times in the equation so when you put all the terms together this is delta h1 this is delta h2 and all of this is delta h3 you have here uh, four t's four t's and four t's so we have 12 t um, uh, or t is, 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 is uh, shows up for 40, uh, 12 times uh, with different uh, powers and what we have to do now is to solve this equation, uh, meaning that to find the value of t that makes this equation satisfied, which means that the addition of this, these terms would be zero with a value of t. Now, and this is not going to be easy to solve using the, uh, the manual solutions. It's gonna take a lot, a lot of time. So the, uh, the solution that we, we can do uh, or uh, first it cannot be solved uh, directly uh, so we have to do the trial and error uh, which means that you'll assume a value and then check the, the solution and then assume another value until you have a value that satisfies the equation and um, uh, after you solve it you'll find that the temperature is 188.5 we, we did something before like this in the heat exchanger problem and we said that you can do this using Microsoft Excel um, and I would like to take this chance to uh, show you the solution uh, using Microsoft Excel uh, for the two cases. This is the case of a diabetic reactor where I assume uh, this to be liquid at standard conditions. Um, and uh, what we this the, the the video I have I put a link in this video in the description of the playlist so you can you can check it and and find the video. Um, so here I have the temperature of ethanol, the temperature of the boiling temperature, and this is the reference temperature. You have here all the constants of ethanol, gas, and liquid, and you have here the delta H calculated for the liquid phase from the boiling point and the reference temperature. You have here the uh, delta H calculated from 400 and the boiling point. We have here the um, the latent heat of vaporization. So this delta H is calculated from the latent heat, delta H1 and delta H2. Uh, we have here the extent of reaction. Uh, we calculated the uh, heat of reaction, the standard heat of reaction from the heats of formation. So we have here delta H2 uh, here. And we have here, I put any temperature, I, I just put 100. And we have here ethanol liquid delta H is calculated from the boiling temperature and 25. And then the gas is calculated from the assumed temperature, which is not correct, of course, uh, and the boiling point. The same for the uh, acetaldehyde and hydrogen. These are the constants. And I calculated everything, assuming that this is fine and this is correct. I can change it and they will all change uh, accordingly. 
um, the same here, the same here, the same here, and finally I calculated the total, and this is delta H. Uh, if the assumption is true, then this is going to be zero, but it's not zero. So what we can do is we will use the same thing we used before. We will use the um, data, the goal seek uh, option. So I want this to be zero by changing the temperature, and it's going to change it until the temperature reaches 188.7, where delta H is going to be zero. So this is <clears throat> uh, simply how you can do this in Excel. Uh, Excel will save you a lot of time by, by doing this. That's why it's, it's a very, very um, efficient way of doing the solution. This is the solution um, that uh, assumes that the um, the reactor is uh, the, the, the ethanol is vapor at standard conditions. We have here only ethanol in the vapor phase and it's calculated directly from 425. This number is, is not contributing to anything. So if I delete this, nothing changes. Um, the same here, the product I have only gas, uh, ethanol, uh, acetaldehyde, and hydrogen. Um, the delta the, the uh, delta HR is calculated from the um, heat of formation of ethanol vapor, not liquid. So um, again, I put the temperature is 100. I'll go to goal seek and I want the um, delta H to be zero by changing the temperature. If you change it, it's going to be 185.4. So it's around three degrees difference between uh, the solution I made and the solution in the textbook. And this is the same number uh, in the textbook. So uh, the, the difference would be that I added some terms here. Uh, so I added, I increased the value of delta H of the reactant. So if you check, this is negative 7,700. Here, it's only negative 3,400 ohms. Uh, and the difference is showing up here. So I have here 2073. Uh, I have here 3340 something. Also here I have 1300 and I have here 4300. So uh, it, it just uh, it's adjusted by the the how delta H is distributed among delta H 1, 2 and 3. The difference is not that big. That's why the assumption that's made by the textbook is uh, is a valid assumption. However, I prefer to go with the um, with the long procedure because for me it seems to be the uh, the more correct path. Um, so it's it's up to you. Um, they both work, and the difference is not that big. It's just three degrees, which is less than I wouldn't say uh, two percent less than two percent. So it's 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 not a big deal. Uh, so anyway, so this is the uh, last uh, problem that we will solve and by this we uh, reach at the end of the chapter 9 uh, or the parts in chapter 9 that we cover and this is the end of the course. I hope it was a uh, uh, useful and enjoyable course for you and I uh, wish you all the best. Goodbye.